Hello, and welcome to the Pixel Scandal Nerdcast on this fine Saturday morning with no coffee. With no uh, coffee, yo. It's going to be a low energy one, guys. No coffee, guys and gals, and non binary pals. Quit um, rubbing it in. <clears throat> We, today on uh, the Pixel Scandal Nerdcast, we are going to talk about uh, going out to a tiny western town and playing a bunch of RPG games and how terrifying it can be when a mouse run down a pole. Runs down a pole. <laughs> we are going to talk rain about... the sky. <laughs> we are going to talk a little bit about Path of Exile and what it means to uh, hate yourself so much that you play a game that resets every month. And we are going to talk about uh, Infinity War. Uh, cause it's been long enough, and fuck you, we're doing spoilers. But that's gonna be at the end, so don't go. Don't leave if you're watching. Uh, we'll definitely we'll, let you know when we're transitioning into spoilers. We'll throw up a big spoiler tag, and we'll give ample warning for people to bounce if they have not seen it. But otherwise, we's gonna talk about it. Thanos dies! Sorry. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm not gonna confirm or deny that, because that would then make it a spoiler. So... Let's get right into this. If we had intro music, this is where it would play. But instead, I'm going to introduce the cast, and hopefully they can tell you a little bit about themselves. Let's kick over to Night Sun and see what he's been up to lately. Uh, I'm Night Sun. I am not wearing a hat. This is true. <laughs> that's, all uh, that's all he's got. Orestes below me. <laughs> below you? You are Your image is below me. You don't have to blow me. <laughs> That's weird, because on mine, so you're on Night top. Sun's over there. Uh, yeah, I'm topping in the in the overlay. Okay. Um, <laughs> what was the question again? Who, Who are, are you? you? Oh, uh, I'm uh, Orestes. Today's going to be weird, guys. I did Pronounce say my name wrong. And this is my Deadpool Pikachu. <gasps> oh, my God. See? He's very cute. <laughs> He's got a little sword. He's my hero. He's my my spirit animal. I'm gonna that's put him amazing. on my desk at work. That's awesome. And, uh, that's it. I I have a hat. It's down in my car, and I don't want to go get it. That's all right. Uh, not everyone needs a hat. Uh, as proof, Gidget, would you like to say hi and introduce yourself to the audience? I am Gidget. Uh, I also am not wearing a hat, but that's because I have a big head, so I don't like wearing hats. Apparently today is going to be uh, weird about hat day. Uh, I also have a cute thing on my desk that I'll share. It's Scrump from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> it's very adorbs. It sits right here on my desk. Toads is adorbs, bro. All right. Toads is adorbs. <laughs> last, last, but most definitely not least, end of line. Lord's How are you doing? Animal. <laughs> it's a screwdriver. <laughs> oh, sorry, end of line. Hello. <laughs> Um, I have been up to a lot of Pantheon MMO forum scouring and Path of Exile. That's Ooh. About it. Pantheon MMO. A lot of P games. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of P, P games. games. I, heard. I like the P games. All the P <laughs> games. I was playing with the P. That's that's pretty great. You're, um, you're playing with your P? Don't do that. Well, <laughs> well end of line, since, since uh, we're on you now, why don't you take us away with some announcements? We got anything coming up? Um, we did before I closed everything. <laughs> Trying to free up some resources here. Um, we have our next paper scandal game for sure. Uh, yeah. That is coming up June 9th at 9 a.m. I think. Yeah. That's next weekend. Yeah, guys. Everybody. That is next weekend. Let's find out what happens to poor Three Fort. Uh, will he make it out of this den of red caps uh, intact and all that? Yeah. And if you haven't watched, <clears throat> go back and watch uh, previous uh, episodes of, Pix of Dungeon, World. Dungeon World. They're on YouTube and stuff. Paper Scandal. Paper Scandal Dungeon World. It's on YouTube. Go watch it. It's fun. Yeah. And then uh, tomorrow, the 4 p.m. stream is going to be Dauntless, which is a Monster Hunter-esque game that just hit open beta. It is free to download if you haven't checked it out and you would like to try a much more casually gated version of Monster Hunter. Um, I would check out Dauntless. Uh, we've, we've had some pretty good fun with it. I'm, I'm having a good time. I mean, it run it's laggy as shit on my potato that I run it on, but... <laughs> you don't have Dude, a potato. You have it, two potatoes now. I'm <laughs> running it on a laptop with a 
GT 750M like in a raid and it's fine you just crank all the settings way way down and then it's you know it's passable it might just be the town i think the town the, is just the laggy town's a little shit. yeah the town's a little more laggy for me than anything but the the actual dungeons is i mean the actual monsters are not that bad well in fairness i'm, I'm sure the engine was optimized around four character sprites and a big sprite not 300 character sprites. Right. Yeah, cuz when when we're in the when we're like hunting and stuff it's fine. But in that town, man. That's all that really matters. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Cool. Well, I think I think Gidget's going to lead us through this thing here. Yeah. So, uh next up is what we're excited about and uh I am excited that it is what I like to call fireworks season. Uh, which means that uh, we do firework shows, like big firework shows. If we had graphics on this show, this is where I would put fireworks. Ooh. Instead, you get this. Yeah. So I am excited. National sign for fireworks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you tapped out, imagine fireworks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is firework season, uh, and I am a licensed uh, pyrotechnic operator, and uh, I have had several shows already this season, and more coming up next week, and uh, prepping for my big 4th of July show, so that's what I'm excited about, because I love fireworks. Yeah, yeah. I like blowing up other people's money. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm excited about. Does anybody have anything else they're excited about? Uh, I just, uh, fi filled out my backer kit info for Cartel, because that shit went through, and so hopefully I'll be getting, uh, getting some info on that soon. Uh, in the next month they're gonna start sending out monthly emails to track the progress. Um, I don't know of any new, uh, Kickstarters, but all the ones that I backed recently have, have cleared, and I'm starting to get awesome information about them, so... Hopefully we'll see some new games in the coming months as we get files for that shit. Yeah. Right. Um, I am I am looking forward to more info on Fallout seventy six. Ooh, yeah. Mm. All I know all we know so far is there's an online component. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I was, so. I, was not it, I think it's open world MMO ish, isn't it? No. Well, Question mark? Instanced MMO ish, I should nope. say. Nope. As far as I know, there's nothing more than that. that that's the extent of the information that's come out. So okay. it's, it's kind of a pre-E3 pre-announcement, and then they'll do the final big thing then. Mm -hmm. But even if it is X number of player co-op Fallout, that's what I've literally been asking for for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. Don't you worry. It's going to be Fallout Battle Royale. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> And then Aristides will definitely want to play it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, sh I'm not quite sure how Vass will work in an online component. <laughs> <laughs> Super because because if it slows everybody down, I'm literally just gonna mash it. <laughs> I'm gonna go old school Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Shadows over Mistara, Mage, Ice spell oh spam. Oh my god! <laughs> I'll win by making everybody rage. Holy light! Holy light! <laughs> Oh, yeah. God damn it, D, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, the next part for us is what we've been playing recently, and this is probably actually going to take up quite a bit of time. Yeah. Um, so who would like to talk about where we went last weekend? Who wants to take the reins I, on that? I want to talk about it. We went to a tiny fucking western town. Yes, we Named did. Murderville. No, it's not called that. It's actually I don't called... know if it was tiny. It was pretty big. It was, well, I mean, it was tiny in that it wasn't an actual town. but Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like it a was legit pretty big. town. The town itself is actually called Green Acres. Um, you can find it on Airbnb. Is it the place to be? Uh, it is. Yeah, that's. it's called Green Acres. Um, they have a Facebook page, and you can find them on um, Airbnb. Uh, in Caliente, California. Yeah. Uh, and it is a tiny western town with a saloon and a jail and uh, bunkhouses, outhouses, but flush toilets, which is wonderful. So. And, and a peacock aviary. For some yeah, reason. the peacocks were cool. Yes. Also, yeah. peacocks are dinosaurs. I don't know if you all knew that. They sound like dinosaurs. <laughs> I, I swear in the to middle God. of the night. 
they must have used peacocks in Jurassic Park for yeah. the sound mm-hmm. of dinosaurs because I like I heard it scream and I was like shit the dinosaurs are coming. <laughs> <laughs> well we went down we went down there Ella and I were down there and the Mel was out in the back little chain area with his big feathers and tails and everything. Oh yeah. Mm. And he was doing like the mating thing because another a little one came out and then he put his tail feathers up oh, and then nice. he like stuck his butt up and was like wrapping the butt feathers against the big <laughs> tail feathers and it sounded like when the spitter popped out and it had his little gills flapping and I was like he's so they, about to they, spit they, at us man they only leave. used peacocks for the entire sound the whole, the entire yeah, film. peacocks the whole way they all just, the, they, the foil, yeah. foley artist was like okay peacocks that's what I got yeah. alright we're gonna they make just, this work I, I'm pretty sure they just took like some motion capture balls stuck them on a peacock and <laughs> CGI this bitch yep. nice that's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we So we went to this tiny western town uh, for a very specific reason. Uh, we as a group go on a, our own little mini RPG convention every year and try to play uh, different systems, different games. We all run different games for each other. And typically we um, stay in normal houses. Uh, but I randomly found this western town in the middle of nowhere and adventure was in store this year so uh yeah. the we, last five years or so i think it's always been cayucas yeah yeah we've cayucas, always got California. a beach been on the beach mm-hmm. yeah this was a big departure i think this the- one definitely made us decide that staying at any normal house for our future conventions <laughs> is out now like we have to yeah. find weird properties because this was way too much fun oh yeah, yeah. well I'm, i mean the common room was a saloon like a legit saloon with a bar and the mirrors and everything and a player piano a player piano, piano like that it was really, we'll really a, out of tune but super fun sounded we'll put a link in the youtube post for this too to their site so you guys can see the pictures and whatnot yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, was, it was really awesome. But uh, we played several games while we were there. Um, the first game we played, I ran, uh, was the system was Stars Without Number. And I kind of adjusted it being a, uh, it's supposed to be like a exploration of space kind of game. And I kind of threw a twist in there that it was, um, you guys were like, basically bounty hunters that needed to go to different planets and bring back um, your bounty and the planet you were sent to was set in kind of an 1800s western Mm -hmm. town so it was themed to where we were Um, and uh, yeah you guys we were were... hunting people who jumped to that planet to get away from 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 our tech yeah yeah like a very technologically advanced um, evolutionary That system is kind of, like, just looking at the character sheet and the few mechanics we went over, it felt a lot like Traveler. It kind of felt a mix of, like, Traveler and D&D, where, like, you rolled Mm -hmm. a d20 for things, Mm -hmm. but then you also rolled 2d6 for for skills like you do in Traveler. Um, So, yeah, it was, it was, it's definitely a weird system. I don't know if I liked it, but I think it fit for... The game I was running, it it fit for the story I wanted to tell, and I wanted it to be a very deadly system. I wanted, if you guys got hurt, for someone to die. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it, it definitely was a very deadly system. And if, uh, if Night Sun had not had his make someone re-roll their damage or attack uh, coin left, mm-hmm. he would have been basically vaporized. Uh, oh, yeah. one man. shot it twice over. Yeah. 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 That's, the, the game is really interesting, but it does have, like, if you don't like a random character generation or deadly systems, that's going to stick with you because everything is rolled randomly. Uh, you Like, all your stats are, mm-hmm. are done random. Um, your hit points. 3d6 the hard way, like... Uh, your hit points are 1d6 plus con, so, like, you're gonna... And, and weapons do, at minimum, a d6 of damage, whereas a yeah. gun tends to do d12. Right. D10 plus. right. So, so uh, I gotta ask the question. Who likes these systems? I actually and, really and, like and, them. and here's the thing. No, no, no. Here, here's my problem. Here's what... I, I honestly want to know this. Who wants to play a game that's a four-hour campaign that you could literally get killed within the first ten minutes of the game, 
regardless of your skill set, regardless of you doing something wrong or out of character, like, okay, if we're looking at old school D&D, like, if you make a strategical error, yeah, you could get gibbed right at the beginning of the dungeon, but you're responsible for that to an extent. With a system like this, well, it's... okay, roll initiative. She decides to attack you. Oh, they get initiative, or well, that's... they hit you, and you're dead. You're done. Yeah, right. that's that's on the GM to fix that problem, because don't don't have don't just send murderers after like if if you're portraying a realistic world right and it's not like a mindless monster then most people don't just run at you and murder you for no reason so unless you're running around right. pissing people off or threatening their life like their odds are you're not going to nobody's going to try to kill you unless they really have to so it just changes the type of game you play in that system. Like I, I'm playing in a Stars Without Number game right now, where we're, we've had three sessions. We've had zero combats. It's all been about skills and talking to people. Uh, I, I think at one point we were target locked by another ship, uh, and we had like we were in our shuttle on planet, and we were target locked by like a fighter jet, and we just had our ship blow it to pieces from space. And then we threatened them, and they just peeled off. Like, because you know that if whoever shoots first wins, basically. So it's it's a lot of like, um, it's a lot of talking stuff. It's a lot of uh, trying to like either pretend that you have the upper hand because then they won't even try. Well, and I so think you that use your words, yeah. yeah, to distract them so your friends can get into a strategically advantageous position, and then you hide. <laughs> yeah. While your friends shoot them. Right. Uh, and uh, it's, I mean, if you think about the game that you guys played, you spent 98% of it talking to people, finding out yeah. information about where your bounty was. You figured out where they were. And, and, you know, I had told you ahead of time before we started the game that it was a deadly system. And so you guys made choices to talk things out or, you know, not try to start a combat or what you know whatever and even when you guys got to where the the bounty was where they were hanging out the guy was even kind of just standing there with a rifle kind of like get off my property he didn't just open fire you know knowing that this is a deadly system i i think if you were going to run a campaign in it you would have to run it the way kurt's mm -hmm. talking where it's mostly talking mostly role playing mm -hmm. and some threatening that there might be a combat and with a one shot i think it's great when you're wanting to have a really deadly system and it's like well okay if you die during the maybe one combat that's going to happen it's a one shot and it, it won't you know ruin yeah, it's your towards the end of the game well, I, I think so. i think our situation might have been a little different because we went through the whole game just talking to people and then we get to the end and then the guy's like with this rifle get off my lawn and then i think it was gordon who just pulls off and shoots him in the face and yeah. kills him and we're like oh this isn't so bad this is pretty, <laughs> this is pretty good and then a tank comes from the backyard and yeah. yeah you guys noticed i in teleported town. into the house like i ran away because <laughs> yeah. i had played this game before yeah brad's saying that you'd need a, a paranoia type replacement system um if it's a murder friendly game and i think that that is very true like you need to have instilled in your players that hey if you get killed, like they, you need to know that there's it's going to be deadly and that there's going to be consequences. Um, yeah. I think it needs to be like Kingdom Death, where you have a settlement and you know you have X <laughs> amount of extra lives, and you're just expecting this person to die. Well, a lot of people. So the the game is a sandbox game. So think like West Marches style, right? Where you're just hex crawling around exploring planets. Depending on why your ship is running around the universe, you may or may not get into many fights. If you're if we're playing spreadsheets, like this is a great game to play spreadsheets uh, in, because you don't want to get in a fight. You're like, no, no, just pay him. We can afford it. Like we don't want to fight. Right. Like that makes sense in this game because you know that if you get in a fight, somebody might die. So for this game, I went on Drive Through RPG and downloaded uh, some PDFs of um, little paper western town buildings mm -hmm. and sat here and cut them out and glued them together. And so as our uh, table. We had Western Town Inception, so we were in a Western <laughs> town with a tiny Western town on the table in front of us as like visual reference for the game, yep. which I thought felt added a little extra. Just it was it was Western Inception. And Western Town Inception. Yeah. 
So yeah, that was my game. That was the first game we played. Um, then that evening, we played uh, Ten Candles, which I think was, I mean, for me, it was the my the highlight of the entire weekend was playing yeah, Ten Candles. for unquestionably sure. And Kurt ran that. That was the most fun at a table. <clears throat> uh, and I, I'm not saying this lightly. It's probably the most fun tabletop I've ever had. Like, ever. It was the coolest game I've ever played. Completely and for those great. people who are familiar with Tin Candles, uh, you can actually have somebody survive at the end. The trick <laughs> is, they have yeah. to be dead when the game starts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fact. So, Ten Candles is played with ten lit candles in complete darkness. <gasps> and Spoiler. spoiler. <laughs> and uh, the GM, or what is the, is there a special term for the person running it in Ten Candles? I like don't feel like it's, it's an MC would be more appropriate. An MC, Probably right? Probably storyteller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you're not even doing that, really. Right. It's, I don't it's know, not, I guess yeah, so. I can't, I can't remember. Director. <laughs> director, yeah, he, you, Fearmonger. So, so when you're running this game, the the way the the way the mechanic of the game works is there are ten lit candles. Everyone has a character that's built out of several little traits, four to be exact, and there is a pool of communal dice that the whole table shares. Uh, all of the all of the PCs, all the characters share. Anytime they come into conflict, they have to roll the whole pool. If they get any sixes, they succeed. <clears throat> If they get any ones, the ones are removed from the pool for now. And so your 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 resources are slowly dwindling. But you can you can burn your traits to like re-roll. Literally the pool. burn them in the fire. Yeah, to re-roll. Technically you're supposed to only re-roll any ones you've rolled, which I think speeds the game up too much and doesn't give it enough room to breathe in the early uh early game. Mm. Uh so the way I did it is you could re-roll any failed dice, or any dice that weren't a six, you re you can re-roll all of those. Uh, to try to get more sixes, or to try to get rid of some ones, uh, and keep your keep your dice. But, you have to describe why that trait makes sense in this scene. So, what happens is the characters are constantly pushing the narrative in a way that their traits are going to make sense. Which means they're acting in a certain way so that their traits make sense. They're, when they, there's a, there's a phase of the game called uh, uh, it's either speaking truths or establishing truth where you go around the table and everybody says one thing that is true and this is sort of the time in the game when uh, you can sort of push the narrative forward uh, the scenes are pretty hyper focused on a short duration of time just mm -hmm. by the nature of how quickly they uh, people fail and the scene ends so this speaking truths is when you can sort of establish things about the world, move the narrative forward. This is the montage between heightened uh, scenes. And so if you know that you have some traits in there that you want to get to, that's when you can start putting things in. So it really gets the, the players to think about, okay, well, how do I get my moment when I'll find hope? to come up, well, I need to find the military. Well, I need to start establishing, oh, there's a, a Humvee off the road. Or, like, I need to start establishing facts. They're going to drive the narrative towards me getting that thing. Um, uh, one and, thing I'd like to add real quick, because you kind of jumped over it, is the the whole system is about narrative control. Yes. Um, if you succeed on any of these given roles, if you get that six on, on your role, you say what happened. You say, I do this, and I do it this way. And the whole system is that. So for the first 30 minutes of the game, the GM or MC is not saying a word mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. It is literally eat the characters rolling, succeeding, and saying, I did this, this succeeded, and this is what happened because of it, and then discussion or whatnot. It's right. not until you fail that you hand over that narrative control to the, the GM, mm -hmm. and they get to tell you why you, why you failed or what happened because of your action. Right. Like, what went wrong? Why'd the scene end? Yeah. So when the scene ends, you blow out a candle, and then you have now you have nine candles, and any the, the player's pool of dice is equal to the lit candles, and the GM's pool is equal to the unlit candles. So as the game goes on, the GM gains more and more narrative control, and the... Because the, anytime you roll the GM and the player rolls... And if the GM gets more sixes, 
the scene doesn't end, but the GM still gets narrative control. So shit just keeps getting worse and worse and worse as the GM gains more and more and narrative control. And you think control. that that would sound unfun, things getting worse, but it was actually really interesting and super terrifying mm -hmm. it, being in this cr kind of w ghost town of a western town. It was the first night we were there. We didn't know it very well. Some of the breakers were off, so we didn't realize that there was really cool lighting outside that we could have turned on to stop scaring the shit out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, halfway through, what, what was that? I was going to say there may or may not have been a mouse that That's ran past right. someone's face. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I was During sitting here, the and there was a pole right behind me, and uh, I think it was end of line, kind of goes, ah, because there's this white mouse that ran down the pole between us. <laughs> it was we a really there. tense time, too. Like, it was when, it was, um, it was like, really tense. We had, like, half our candles were down. And by the way, you're playing this in pitch dark. Pitch black. Mm -hmm. That's that's instrumental to this. You're playing and we're in, in the, the middle of nowhere, so there's no, like, light coming in the window or anything. There is an enormous amount of wind outside that is shaking the windows. Yeah. And we're on a train, which is emulating us in a train. Yeah, because like, there's all this wind actually plain, outside. But it it's just a tension engine. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. well, the light... <laughs> What's happening that you're, you know, you're always in danger and then mid game you just kind of like rift off of each other. <laughs> well, one of, one of the inter interesting things is, as he said, it is a tension engine because mm -hmm. the core premise is you are, you know, the lights have gone out. So you are always huddling around lights for safety. Mm -hmm. And you literally find that as the game goes, when you're first started, you have your 10 candles. Everyone's laid back. There, it's it's kind of got that There's little ominous feel. Plenty of light. Plenty of light. Plenty of light. It's like, just spooky. It's yeah, a it's little spooky. spooky. It's a You're little like, spooky. It's a little spooky, but, but we've got but, candles. You but guys everyone there at the table. It, it's spooky. It's <laughs> um, but everything in that uh, you start off and and every, you know it's one of definitely one of those games that everyone has to be invested in to you get that yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. And so for that first forty minutes to an hour. You know, we we are the ones who are engineering the the spookiness or the spookiness. The spookiness. spookiness. Yes. But as those lights start going out, and it gets darker and darker, and you literally have to huddle around what little candles are left well, in we're order passing to read them to see to, the in, dice. Yes, yeah. In order you can't to even see the, the dice, dice. <laughs> or to read your cards, or to yeah. do anything, mm -hmm. it, everyone starts literally huddling around the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, real quick physics lessons for those people who are interested in playing this game. I if you have a candle and a glass, and you put a card directly on top of it, it creates a vacuum, fire goes out, and you're fucked. I and would just like this. to say, in my defense, <laughs> in my defense, I had had a lot to drink at that point. So, uh, and, so, so uh, something, else, something else that's interesting that adds to the tension is that if, if a candle goes out for any reason, not just if you blow it out, if it goes out accidentally, the scene ends and we have to describe what happened. Right. So when you go to light one of your traits on fire to put it in the little burn bowl, if you accidentally knock out that candle while you're trying to use your trait scene ends you lose like it moves to the next scene well, and so it adds to that oh my god we have to protect these little candles and i, I accidentally did that on candle two and so the <laughs> rest of the time we were very carefully burning like yep. tips and edges of our mm -hmm. little three by five cards because no one else was going to accidentally put out a candle after it because like oh shit we went from 10 to 8 like real quick <laughs> now i will interject though um, the pacing of the game seems is, is interesting as well too because you start off in that first candle, it's forty minutes, thirty. Yeah. 40 oh minutes. yeah. Yeah. Between the talking, you've got a and, lot of dice and a lot of dice, and then the game speeds up and speeds up and speeds up as you have fewer and fewer dice. Like we went mm -hmm. through the last three or four candles in fifteen twenty minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I, I bad. I got might bad. almost say though that the game might have felt too long had we not lost that first candle. That, that freebie first candle. You know? <laughs> because if we had another go around that was 30, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. it might have dragged. That's that's interesting. It, it, the uh, the way I was doing traits may adjust that. Um, if you go by the book, you only re-roll the ones, mm. which is a lot See, less chance of, of success early. I think that's too fast. I think that's yeah. going to have the counter problem. Mm -hmm. the, it... it 
drops the game down to about an hour and a half instead of about 3.30. Yeah. Which, honestly, I feel like that nice long... And I agree with you um, that like if there had been... I think the tension needed to continue to build, and so I think mm-hmm. things happened at the appropriate pace. But I also felt like in the beginning, you kind of need that first 30, 40 minutes where you're succeeding at things to figure out, like, I have these traits on cards, and I'm in my head trying to decide, okay, this is how my character acts. But without interacting with the rest of the people at the table, you can't really put together who you are in this world where you're probably going to die someday. Well, you are going to die. I mean, that's a core conceit of the game. Yeah. Well, and but something the that... character doesn't know they're going to die. You the person yeah. does. but like that way. Right. That screws yeah. up the game. Right. And so, like, you have to sit there and go, what are my motivations? Why am I sit- Why am I on this train? How did mm-hmm. I get on? I mean, not every time you play it, you're on a train. We just happen to be on a train. But, you know, why are we on a train? Why did we stop and trust these people? You know, how did things go wrong so fast? You know, and it, I think you need that first 30, 40 but- minutes to kind of flesh it out so it's more interesting at the end when people start dying. Yeah, we're, we're all we're all very aware that we're going to die. It's it's claimed it's disclaimed at the beginning of the game but yet halfway through the tension is definitely building we're like hey there's a light in the back of the train who wants to go with me i was like oh uh-uh. uh-uh. i'm not going back nope. there <laughs> nope i <laughs> so have it- a i have a trait that says engineer i'm gonna stay at the front up here okay guys you guys go ahead and play <laughs> yeah. with that light in the back of the train <laughs> so i said during the uh during or before we got started because the the core premise is you die everyone dies mm-hmm. but they die at the end yeah, and it was described, you know, as like you know a tragic horror kind of mm-hmm. thing. And I was, and I said in the moment that I don't remember any real horror movies or horror, horror stories where the cast lives until the last the last scene, basically, mm-hmm. and then all dies horribly. Mm-hmm. Ironically, I happened to just rewatch the the remake of Dawn of the Dead, mm-hmm. where although there's some deaths going through. 80% of the cast dies in the last 10 minutes. Right. It's On not like a the, slow drop off. It's the, like the, all at once. Mm-hmm. They all make it on the bus? Spoilers. 80% of them? Well, like, they, they, they craft the bus, right? And then they ride the so, bus to the boat? So um, they lose uh, the you know the, the gun store owner. He dies because yeah. they're trying to help him. Mm-hmm. Then they go, oh, crap, we got to go save the girl because she's an idiot. <laughs> on on the rescue mission, they uh, the the redneck guy dies. Then they get back, and um, they all get into the. Everyone at that point gets into the buses. Then they take the buses out, and three people die in the bus crash, and then this end scene, and then everyone dies on the island. Yeah. So within fifteen minutes, eighty percent of the cast dies. So what was really interesting is is the way that Kurt handled everyone's deaths. When we were down to one candle, when someone would fail a roll, that's how we would narratively, you know, Kurt would narratively describe how we died or, or what went wrong. And so we there's one candle left, and everyone's sitting there like, I have to do something. This thing's coming after us, and I'm going to whatever, you know, we're going to die. And so every time, nobody really wanted to do anything because the minute you do a thing, you have to roll the dice and you're going to die, right? Like, yeah. I mean, we have a dice left, so or a die left. Um, and I, I was the only one who had gotten my hope die, that this die you get to keep early in the game. So I had two dice, and so, ooh, I have one more than everybody else. <laughs> it, it is not enough. It is not that enough. Is, that is 100% more dice. It is 100% more dice. And it did not matter. I died anyway. Too, too little. But it was, I, I think that need to like, oh, I need to roll the dice. Here's the candle. I'm going to pass it to you so you can see the your die roll. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that getting down to the point where we're literally huddled around the candles really added to the tension. And I mean, we really couldn't have asked for a spookier night with the wind and everything to really add oh, yeah. to the tension. Oh, yeah. and it was perfect. Setting. It was so great. Like there would be a lull for a second or something creepy would happen and the windows would go doing rattle. Yeah, and of course we're out, out in the the wilderness in the mountains, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's literally no a living person that's within like a quarter of a mile or a mile of it. Right, and it's so it's just there's and you can't see any city lights or anything. Nothing, mm-hmm. middle of nowhere. It was very much like like glamping, like we had flush toilets and a hose to rinse things off, but otherwise, like there wasn't a lot of amenity and power. 
but like there wasn't a lot of amenities Mm -hmm. in the best way possible like it it had just the right i think combination of roughing it and amenities where we didn't feel like ugh, this is camping but at the same time it you know it's a western town it should feel a little 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 rough around the edges yeah that's how we felt it was a it was a comfortable amount of roughing it right and this is the the first horror game I've ever played in that didn't turn into an episode of Scooby Doo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it, the the system really helps like with immersive play and and keeping it on tone. Um, I did a lot to sort of ease everyone into it uh, and sort of give everyone time to joke and and chatter. And I think that helped, but I, the mechanics are really solid and. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you're ever going to run 10 Candles, and I recommend that you do, because it's a great game, I, don't rush into it. Like, give people the time to settle in, slowly turn lights off in the house, don't, don't just, okay, it's in the dark and everybody's got candles. Uh, ease everyone have into it. Have a few drinks. Have a few drinks, because you don't ease notice. Ease everyone's inhibitions a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you don't realize how dark it's getting. Really, I mean, and that was something yeah. I have to definitely commend you for, Kurt, because, I mean, you had talked about the first time you played and how your GM had kind of done that for you guys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, w- there's there's lights in the saloon, which is, like, the common area, and there's remotes for them. And so very slowly, Kurt had gone around and, like, turned the light switches off for all the, like, extra lights that are in the room. And then he would turn off, like, half the lights in the room while we were just kind of... He was setting up the table, and everybody got a drink, and asking us general, like, oh, how you doing, kind of quiet. Everybody was just kind of getting calm and quiet, and we've all just kind of migrated to the table without Kurt saying, like, sit down. We just, like, at one point, everybody was just sitting down, and Mm -hmm. we all had a drink in front of us and snacks, and we were just kind of like, oh, yeah, And and then he's explaining to us the system, and then sometime explaining the system, the lights went out, and all the candles got lit, and I don't remember when that happened, but... It like the transition was so well that it went from oh there's lights on to nope all we have is ten candles and it's well, dark you, you light and them it's in creepy. The, you light them in the character generation. Like yeah, you light them very in the slowly. Character generation. You do like three at a time, yeah. and then another three, yeah. and then another three, and then uh, you light the last candle uh, it starts. I will definitely recommend a dice tray or many because yeah, yeah. God help you if you lose a die during in this the dark. game. Yeah, yeah. Um, we if, use plates. Our uh, our situation was not the best for rolling dice. There were holes in the table, and honestly, I'm pretty sure the dice could have gone through the floor uh, yeah. with the size of the cracks in the floorboards. But um, if you've got Why a should large, be keeping them in one place so that you can see them easily. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a large area like a or a place to put a dice tray that everyone can reach around the candles, then that's probably your best bet. Yeah. So day two. Uh, we opened up with uh, <laughs> several hours of Kingdom Death run, uh, you know, in uh, Arezti's game slot. Uh, we did really well killing a lion and a uh, and an antelope. And, an antelope. antelope. And, and then we then, were riding high on that wind. Yeah, we were. And then we got back to town and got some random guard guy, King's guard guy, and he King's murdered man. everyone except for me and Arestes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he murdered me, I would say, about an hour and a half before we stopped playing the game. Uh, my only problem with that game is is if you die early, you're just like, all right, I guess I'll go over here now. Um, Which was fine, because you were running a game next, so you had time to Yeah, I got to go notes. prep my next game. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, uh, I had, what had happened to my head? It, like, exploded into a... A helmet. Oh, you got a helmet? crown. Yeah, I got yeah. some... Mm-hmm. <laughs> The regal crown. Yeah. Yes. If, if you're not familiar with Kingdom Death, it is, I, I mean, it's not the kind of game I would have bought because of the price of entry, <laughs> but I'm glad that we know someone who who made that sacrifice <laughs> because it's a it's a cool game to be able to play. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, uh, definitely. But yeah, it's oh man, it is brutal. And I'm sure we will talk about Kingdom Death a lot, uh, forever. Because it's, it's yeah. we, we're gonna play it from t- from time to time, mm-hmm. so it'll come up a lot, a lot. But it's our new Pathfinder. It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's our new Pathfinder card game. I yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. not we Pathfinder playing, the role playing game. Pathfinder Adventure Card Game is the name yeah. of it. Yeah, 
I still want to play that again. I was have I have a lot of fun with Pathfinder, but it might yeah. be because I'm playing the most broken character ever created. I like your Pathfinder too. I, yeah, I do. but I it's like it's our new it's our new co-op tabletop. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. You Default. Know. Yeah. So moving right along, right after that, we played. Uh, is it called Monster of the Week? Yeah, we played Monster mm-hmm. of the Week, uh, which I ran as Monster of the West, and we did it as a western with uh, several hunters riding riding into town on their on their ponies. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. You guys want to talk about it? I mean, I feel like, uh, Billy was <laughs> the, uh, the most the entertaining shooting. character mm-hmm. run, yeah. uh, run by Night Yeah, the 10 year old um, spooky. Yeah. No, it's spoopy. spoopy. Oh, sorry. The 10 year old spoopy. spoopy. Yes. Uh, Jinx yeah. Is OP. Cause. <laughs> Jinx is amazing. Just it's... Random shit just kept happening, and uh, it was all thanks to Billy. <laughs> yeah, bad things just happen around him. It's not his fault. Billy the kid, who was what ten? You were playing a ten year old. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Billy is the reason my teleports never worked right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had we had a. a I was the, played the wronged. So if you know the system, I was playing the wronged, which is a family member got murdered by a monster of some type, and now I'm out trying to kill that monster, mm-hmm. uh, which was werewolves, which happened to be what we were fighting in the game. So who would have thought? Who would have thought? Um, Might have something to do with you sleeping with the GM. Just saying. What? Spoilers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. When I was when I was coming up with this, normally normally with uh, games like Monster of the Week and other PBTA games, they're intended for long term play, like for a campaign. And so you don't really prep a whole lot. You maybe prep like a starting monster and stuff like that. But the the playbooks, the characters have so many like uh, plot hooks built into them mm-hmm. that it's really difficult to hit them all in a one shot. And so there were certain things like I knew if I had a wronged, their their monster was going to be the monster we were fighting because I had no, I wasn't going to have time to come up with a new monster, obviously to to deal with that. And it's it's weird trying to do a one shot that way. So I I ended up prepping the monster and the and the mystery, and then just figured, okay, if anybody has anything that's specifically about monsters, I'm just going to tell them, and they're gonna that's the monster that they have. I would like to say that uh, we had a sixth person with us who does is not um, really experienced in playing RPGs. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has been joining us off and on for the last couple of months, um, or I guess six months now. Um, but I felt like she did a really great job playing her demon in this game. Um, she kept trying to eat people's faces off. With and, her sharp teeth. And, yeah, and uh, she was she was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed um, the character that she developed, and I think it really added to the story that that we were all playing in. So I was I was really happy to see that. I love seeing new players kind of flourish and grow and kind of find their. Their yeah, comfort she, zone in RPGs. She definitely found her footing in tabletop that weekend. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, and and all the games, even the Ten Candles game. Mm-hmm. I think especially the Ten Candles game. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, horror is kind of her her shtick. Like that's the thing, thing she likes. I know you're happy about that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, definitely. I think Ten Candles <clears throat> took the the training wheels off, and she she was able to take that and run. And then playing Monster of the Week was you know it was like oh I can do this. This was this is I'm playing a demon. I get this. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. You should be experienced with demon as much as she watches friggin' horror movies and <laughs> Annabelle all the time. Insidious, like every time. It's like, what are you watching? It's either yeah, we're, we're gonna see more scary games. In this yeah, group, it's either a show on how to murder somebody and not get caught, or a monster movie. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it'd be worth so, it. So I will say, this is the I don't know fourth or fifth PBTA that we have played or mm-hmm. done in one way or shape or form. This has to be my favorite so far. Because Honestly, of, I think so. Me too. Yeah, I think one. So. I felt every. Uh, what is it? Character book, as they call it, or class, or playbook? Mm-hmm. Playbook. That's the word they it choose. Didn't suck, but everyone, every playbook was awesome in their own way. Mm-hmm. I felt every every playbook had something that made them uniquely awesome, and in technical, it, they're blatantly overpowered and stupidly strong mm-hmm. in the, in their own 
niche. Right, mm-hmm. right. It was uh, very balanced. Everyone was powerful and interesting. Yeah, and so I don't feel anyone there. Like, Gidge was playing a literal mortal who was just pissed off at a bad situation. And she rocked face. Yeah, I was the most human human in the group. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, was, I was, like, the only human. I, I held my own in combat just fine. I mean, mm-hmm. and that was, it, I, yeah. I, I was probably the weakest in combat. And I was the caster. Spell slinger. Or spell slinger, but I was like a, an actual caster. Mm-hmm. But I felt like the weakest combat person. But even then, like, I dispatched one and I was able to, like, actually do a heal at one point, which was kind of mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't feel worthless. I didn't fight anybody. Just a building <laughs> fell on a werewolf. It's, it's weird. <laughs> or or, or, or suddenly there's a tornado and now there are flying cows, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that, I yeah. think, was my favorite part of the game was the tornado of cows. That just, all of a sudden, I'm like, you're like, there's cows. What? Yeah, no. there's a cow. <laughs> him stick him sticking the bellhop in a perpetual oh, like, yeah. <laughs> state of well. walking upstairs that never ended and he's crying and like I can't have to get out. Oh a poor guy. That was my favorite part. That poor and we guy. we end up leaving and we're all like, well surely that's gonna dissipate. We come back like five hours later and he's still there. We're like, oh shit. <laughs> you didn't take like, it crying on the stairs. Oh the man. The poor guy's gonna starve to death on this infinite stairwell. And the Divine is one of the most unique and best support classes in any system. <laughs> if you're going to play Monster of the Week and you want to have a best friend, it needs to be a Divine who can teleport you places. Except, Except when he rolls badly roll and, and drops you off in a mine and you have to crawl your way out because he yeah. ended up in a building and you ended up in the, the mine 30 miles divine away or whatever. Divine is not your friend at all. <laughs> well, Divine is the best. It's like we're divine going over here. Well, that's Billy's fault. <laughs> the only time my rolls, the only time the teleport rolls did not work out well is when Billy was in the direct vicinity, and everything. That's not true at all. It's all not scattered. True at all. <laughs> yeah, myself yeah. and the other girl, we both ended up in a mine together, and we had to basically like crawl out of, like walk our asses out of there, and have to. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. very funny and very interesting, but also frustrating as hell. Well, for time's sake, let's move along. Uh, the last thing we did on our trip, uh, we played a wonderful game ran by End of Line. Uh, it was called Bound in Blood. That was the title of the game, um, which was like an escape room that he had set up all over the Western town without any of us really noticing or finding things uh, all weekend long. <laughs> mm-hmm. And... Um, uh, I I mean, I had a great time. We, we turned off all the lights in the entire western town, and uh, he provided little headlamps so we could see where we were going and not eat shit while we were walking around in the dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, yeah, it was kind of a mix of, like, a scavenger hunt and ex- escape room. Like, we had to find the bones of an ancestor so that we could do a ritual. So, yeah, I mean, it was really, it was really, really interesting and really fun. Mm-hmm. Um and, and really hope cool. that the, oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, and, and hope that the owners of the property didn't see us drawing pentagrams into the dirt <laughs> with fluorescent paint. Glow in the dark, with phosphorescent powder. Yeah. Big <laughs> pentagram with the black light. It's like, uh, all right. That's, and it's that's why I use powder. Yeah, that powder was it cool, went away, man. Yeah. But it was very. Mess with their it, property. it was very cool. I mean, it took us all over the place. It took us down to the koi pond, and uh, there's a there was a little mine with a little uh, donkey and cart out front. And part of one of the things was to put together a puzzle, a picture, and the picture showed you where you needed to go on the property. And it was like one of them was of a dead donkey, and it was it was kind of interesting. It being at the end too, because we had spent time on the property, but not. Not a lot of time exploring, but we had seen all of these things around the property for the two days we had been there. So by the time it came time to put the puzzles together, it was like, oh, this is the donkey. That's at the mine. Let's go down to the mine. You know, so we were able mm-hmm. to kind of think of where we were supposed to go because we had been around. Um, and it kind of ended with basically like this very cool ritual around a candle that we had to say a, a thing and then... He had a remote that changed the color on the candle, and we had to go around and find all the different 
pieces of the by of the bones around the town and um yeah it was it was very very cool it was very cool yeah, it was and that game had fun. a very, a very real sense of spoopy danger because we were walking <laughs> around the mountains in the middle of the night. Yes. Where there's yeah, like man. mountain lions and mountain bears and mountain cows. <laughs> <laughs> there were mountain cows. I found my spirit animal up there. Yeah, spirit cow yeah. that was super ticked off about being locked out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a cow who was very just like, <laughs> like the whole. <laughs> So upset. Let me in! <laughs> <laughs> it was so loud. It was so funny, though. Uh, I tried to get a picture, but he was so far uh, away. Yeah. For, for all the warnings of wildlife, though, the craziest thing we saw was a toad. So. Oh yeah, we the toad did on scare him. the shit out of me. We were walking down that I, path. I don't path. know. I, I think mice and lizards were my antithesis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you because... guys didn't have to sleep in the saloon at night by yourself. <laughs> Well, that's because you woke up with the lizard on your face. <laughs> I, no, I, I didn't wake up say, with it on my face. It ran over my face. I do need to say for our review of the actual place that we stayed, um, the saloon was the only place that had any critters to right. it. The bunkhouses where you slept yeah. were completely critter free. There was mm-hmm. no spiders, no mice, nothing in in the bunkhouses. Mm-hmm. Um, the saloon itself definitely had wildlife issues, um, but I mean that well, was like expected. A, so. It's like a real deal saloon. Like, the boards are not flush on the floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's gaps. So, like, things can get in. Things are going to get in. And we just kept all of our food that was open in the fridge at night because there's a refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, other than poor end of line waking up with a <laughs> lizard on his face <laughs> and listening to mice run around all night. So bad. Dude, those uh, mice were all over the place at night. To be fair, it was probably the same lizard that was on the couch when we first got there yeah. and let me pet him. So, he's very friendly. He's a friendly, he's a very friendly probably lizard. Probably wouldn't what, what, have killed you. Kurt, Kurt put him outside. We didn't kill him. Yeah. Yeah, I caught, I grabbed I we caught one of the lizards and put him outside. And then as soon as I put but, that one outside, I saw one twice the size under the bar. Yeah. yeah, like you, yeah. You, there was but, no way you were not going to clear that saloon. Yeah. But yep. don't think that the critters are only coming from the floor because at one oh point God. it was raining baby mice. And it was very <laughs> sad. It was very uh, sad. That, that, was, that was unfortunate. That, that was, was definitely so bad. that was so sad. And oh, it's, Elle was so sad about those baby mice. Yeah, she did the not. Only, oh. The only good thing about that is that it didn't happen during the Ten Candles game because we would have been paying some <laughs> right, property we were damage. <laughs> we would have right, been paying property damage when Kurt would have flipped the table, threw, jumped out the window. <laughs> yep. yeah, and he would have fallen right on me right where there. They fell. Where yeah. they fell was right where I was sitting. Yeah, some the some mice had had babies and they were in the loft where we couldn't get to, and we heard squeaking and we couldn't figure. We thought it was just the regular mice. But apparently we're babies, and they crawled their way on the edge of the loft and fell. Two of them. That was sad. Yeah. yeah. Thankfully, it was when all the lights were on, and uh, <laughs> we weren't doing anything spooky. Right. At the time. We hadn't shut all the lights off yet. Uh, so moving right along, uh, and kind of moving away from our our western town mm-hmm. recap, uh, and definitely for more information, go look up Green Acres uh, and the tiny western town. It was a great. A uh, great place to stay. But I will say for next year, Al and I both plus two on the uh, castle up in Reading. That looks amazing. Yes, we okay. are. We are definitely going to have to find a new interesting place for next year's uh, little con. Mm-hmm. So uh, moving right along, let's switch to Path of Exile. Uh, End of line. You want to kind of talk Does about? Does anyone really want to hear about Path of Exile? Well, I mean, you're going to be playing it on the stream, and yeah, so I'll be, play, I'll be streaming give... it most of the night tonight. Okay. So um, what, what a new, a new, a new league started yesterday. They do leagues every few months. Um, they're usually pretty significant mechanic changes uh-huh. to the game. Um, Path of Exile is. I, I don't want to say it's a Diablo clone, but it is an ARPG. It's mm-hmm. a little bit more reminis- um It's a little closer to Diablo two, but with mm-hmm. an enormous amount of customization and depth. Um, I think I've probably played, this will probably be my fourth or fifth season. Mm. And, um, honestly, I, I still feel like I'm probably no 35 to 40% of the actual game. It's, it's just a never ending learning. And I think that's what makes the game so rich to play is it's a constant learning, um, thing. But anyway, this expansion probably brings the most significant changes to the actual game. They've done a lot of gym and skill reworks that have 
turned a lot of builds that I've kind of wanted to play for a long time, which is a trapper, which is what I'll be playing tonight. I'm playing a a um, uh, an arc trapper saboteur, which is a trapping mines trapping and miner specialist, and um, it's been fun. I'm 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 kind of holding off on how I feel about the content, the new content they put in. I'm not a big fan of timed events. I think mm. it's kind of lazy. Um, but I think it's mainly because my character doesn't really have a mobility skill yet. And so I'm having trouble like getting around quickly enough to keep up with the timer. But I suspect mm. once I get a decent shield and shield charge and faster attacks. It'll be. But anyway, um, game's really good. It's free to play. The only thing that you have to pay for if you want to is some extra inventory. Um, and the rest of that is purely aesthetic stuff, which is, I think really what people love about the game is it's there's no cash grab. There's no mm. play to pay to win of any type. Um, it's pay for convenience and pay for aesthetics, and that's it. So that's, that's the way to do free to play. Yeah, but it's daunting for new players is the biggest problem. It yeah. has a pretty difficult gate. If you're a new player and you log in and you look at that talent tree, you're probably just going to immediately log off and on its. Mm. Um, well, but... not to, not to mention the fact of the how easy it is for a brand brand spanking like new player who gets in without any research to completely ruin a character. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Well, and that's, I mean, that's good to know that, because there are a lot of games where you can just go in and start, click, 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 I'm just going to pick things, and, you know, eventually you're going to fill in the whole thing, and it's fine. And it's good to know that Path of Exile is not that kind of game. You need to do your research, and you need to know what you're going to put where for the kind of build you're going for. Yeah, the the best thing you could do if you're going to get into Path of Exile is don't, you're not a builder. Like, honestly, the people who build builds, it, there's a lot of math involved, there's a lot of research and playtesting involved. You're not going to do that. The best thing you can do is just go to YouTube, find a starter build for the league type and version that we're in, mm. and watch the video and say, does this look cool? If yes, then download Path of Building, load it up in the Path of Building, and play that. and Look for the gear that you need to make that build work. And then once you've gotten that character to high level and you start understanding the basics and the mechanics, then start looking into, okay, well, once I'm really knowledgeable about the game, now I can build something. Like, I want to play... A power siphon build. No one's playing this. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I can make it work. And then you can have fun doing that. Definitely don't do that initially. Mm. You want to start a build. Learn yeah. the game. Learn the basics of the mechanics. You say you're playing a, a saboteur trapper type deal. Whenever yeah. you say that, the, the thing that immediately comes to my mind is Night Sun's first character that he started in Rift when we were doing PvP. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Sneak around and put grenades in people's pockets and just sneak away. <laughs> and then 30 seconds later, they would just explode and be like, "What the? F what was that?" <laughs> yeah, um, that saboteur on roof was a was the bo we uh, bottlenecked. It was a yeah. bottleneck. Like no one could get up, and you and I would just heal each other and just keep, hold <laughs> the totem. Oh, that man, burst that damage is so, so stupid. Much. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, so whenever you say, I'm a trapper, it's like, I just imagine you sneaking around and putting grenades in pockets and just taking off, and then 30 seconds later, I better go back and get my loot. Yeah. Well, and end of line, you'll be streaming tonight, and are you going to be mm -hmm. streaming throughout the week when you're playing? Yeah, I'll probably be streaming um, when we don't have events going and we're going to be playing. I, I'm playing with a buddy, and yeah, we're going to be uh, streaming. We're, we're not going as kind of hardcore as we usually do. We're kind of playing a little bit casually, but... But yeah, we're streaming. If, if anyone is interested in the game, go check it out. Um, check out the stream. You can ask questions. I'll try and answer them as best I can. Yeah, so tune in if you'd like to kind of see what it's about and decide for yourself if it's something you want to play. Watch it. It's of fun. I played it a long time ago before the leagues even started, like mm -hmm. right when it came out in open beta. I remember we yeah. installed it and played around with it then. And even back then, the talent tree was just ridiculous. It's um, much better just, than it was then. Uh, yeah. It's actually very intelligently designed now. I just I don't have the time. No, for that, yeah, it's for that right now. Yeah. So uh, we are just about out of time, um, and I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, just take our Avengers: Infinity War topic and continue it next week. Um, that way sure. we can. Uh, really give it a, a good conversation. And I know that Handor would definitely want to be in on that conversation as well. So mm -hmm. uh, we it actually made sense for him not to be here this week. Right. right. Yes. He, that way he didn't have to listen and have nothing to contribute to our conversation about yeah. the, uh, yeah. the Western con. Our, our murder con. Our, yeah. Yeah. Murderville con. That's what we were calling Murderville it. Con. Murderville, Murderville con. Yeah. con. 
Because um, we're definitely going to die out there. Because we were definitely going to die out there. <laughs> oh, no, my legit, Lord. though, driving through the canyon up there, you feel like, okay, seriously, when we get there, there's going to be an axe murder. Like, we are driving in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's very banjo-y out here. Like, what? where are we? But once you get there, it's really cool. But going through that canyon is... That was creepy, man. Like, there's no houses or anything. Oh, look, a trailer. No nothing oh, out here. That's, that's not a pretty yeah. trailer. It's a run down, <laughs> empty trailer. Yeah. Drive around the bend, and your car is sitting in the middle of the street, and it's like, why did they stop? Oh, there's cows. cows. There's a little wooden shed in the middle of nowhere with nothing around it. It was like, oh, that's where Mrs. Horby, Voorhees is headed to. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, but thank you for tuning in, um, and thank you for listening to us ramble and recap our wonderful adventure last weekend. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back next week with uh, with Dungeon World. Uh, before we go, if you if you'd like to contact the show, you can email us at pixelscandal at gmail com, or you can hit us up on Twitter at pixel underscore scandal on uh, at on twitter dot com, uh, or and. I think it's at Pixel Scandal on Instagram, if you want to go there. Uh, if that's how you consume social media, you're welcome to, to get there, too. We don't have a Facebook. If that's something you want, email us and tell us <laughs> that's what you want, and we'll post it on Facebook. Uh, and if you'd like to contribute or, or add topics to the show or send us any suggestions, like stop uh, rambling at the end of the show, <laughs> you can do that at uh, pixelscandal at gmail.com. All right. Well, Matt's not here, so oh, I can't ask him for an outro. <laughs> I'll have I... to print out a picture of Matt's ugly face and just like hold it up. And you can ask him. <laughs> well, someone, someone call her. Someone call him and put your phone on speaker, and then we could ask him. Yeah, he'll just say no. <laughs> and, do you have an outro? <laughs> no. 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 All right. Why are well, you calling me? Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today, Thanks and a lot. Uh, for watching later. I guess. <laughs> Have fun and for farewell. Farewell, Later, folks. I'm going to go play Dauntless. As am I. Yeah. Nerd.